Please give a big, big round of applause for that magnificent DJ Jazzy Jeff. Thank you everybody for being here. My name is OP. I'm the artist relations manager for Serato. Uh, and we are definitely blessed to have this legend here in the house with us to go over a bunch of things today. Yeah. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off on this side. Mm, okay. Yeah. So we know Jeff as a DJ, but we also know him as an incredible producer. So he's gonna start working on a beat using Serato Studio. Um, if you don't know about Serato Studio, it's our uh, DAW for beat making, and Jeff has kind of mastered this program. So he's gonna walk us through. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna walk us through uh, some steps of what he would do in terms of you know drums, samples, and a couple other things to kind of create a beat and make it happen. Um, Jeff has actually made a sound pack for Serato Studio. So if you have a subscription to Serato Studio. You get all of his sounds for free that you can use. So that's start the process. Let's get into it. Yeah, so, you know, I've had the beautiful pleasure of working with the guys at Serato for a long time. Um, had the chance to spend some time at the headquarters in New Zealand. Um, and when they were designing this, um, you know, we would talk about workflow. Um, I'm somebody that I come from the MPC days, I come from the SB12 days, you know, as, as things have kind of transitioned, you know, from drum machines just into computers, you kind of want a one-stop shop. Like, I'm just somebody that I would love to just be able to open up something and be able to make a beat. If I have a sample and I want to chop it up, I want to chop it up. You know, uh, if I want to arrange it, I want to arrange it, you know, especially blending the two together, like making music and DJing, sometimes you want to kind of make something that you can play. Um, and that could be a, an original track as well as an edit. You know, anybody in here who DJs knows that the world is revolving around DJ edits. You can take a record that you know and you can add kicks and snares and turn it backwards and play it and it's a brand new record and everybody's kind of like, I don't have that version. And that's when you kind of give the thumbs up because that version is a version that you made. So this program is, is uh, very clean and very simple. Um, when the first time that I got it and I used it, I was actually shocked because um, being a creative, sometimes your equipment gets in the way. Sometimes you have an idea, you know, I'm pretty sure a bunch of us, you know, if you're a creative, you were in the shower and you had an idea, you got out to dry yourself off and you was like, damn, I forgot it. And you, so you need something that's going to kind of get that idea out. Um, the first thing that I've realized about Serato Studio is how fast it was. It was, it was, it gave me the ability to take idea, if I have some drum sounds, if I have some samples, and I have a quick idea, I can get it out before you forget it because the, it's, the ease of use is so simple. Um, so I had a chance to make a pack in Serato with drums that I was able to go through a library of drums that I had. Uh, I'm a drum fanatic. I have about a million drum sounds, and you only need seven. You know, so uh, it's just overkill. But I, I put together uh, a pack thanks to OP, came down, helped me kind of guide through the pack. I told him the sounds that I wanted to use. Um, so it's just really, really quick. I set this tempo pretty much at 94 BPMs. I can put the click on and basically find a hi-hat, and I normally start with a hi-hat. now. The beautiful thing that I like about Studio is Studio will, Studio, I'm gonna give you a, a, a new one because I wanna, oh no, okay, we could do that. So Studio allows you to program in blocks. So I love the fact that if I click this, So that's basically a one bar block. 
But if I'm satisfied with this and I want it to be four bars, you just click the plus sign. And that goes to two bars, and then that goes to four bars. So it's kind of like, I, all right, I have that. Um, and then what I normally will do is add a snare um, to just kind of give me the guide. Because most of the snares that I'll do will be basic. Um, so it's the same thing. I kind of want to move that kick over so I can click that and then move this over and then I can hold that down and turn the velocity down and this kind of gives you a ghost kick because the first kick before this one is low that might be too much of a ghost kick So just programming a, a basic beat, and then a lot of times I'll go into uh, a sample library. I have a ton of samples. So if, if, if you look, I have music samples. So Jeff, be before you jump into the sample, mm -hmm. um, Studio actually comes with a bunch of samples that people can use oh to, right? Oh my goodness. So, Studio comes with drum sounds, studio comes with one-shot drum sounds, studio comes with drum loops, um, studio comes with drum samples. So even if I want to, where is my drums? If I go here to my, my drum kit, it has, these are all of the drums that are in my kit. So you can pretty much audition like, I actually like this snare better than the snare that I used. So I can just grab this, drag it here, and now... But it has drums one shot, so it's one shot snares. These are shakers. You hear shaker loops. Hi-hat loops. I'm, I, I love hi-hat loops, so... Um, I can literally go in. And it's a lot of people that have made drum sounds. Decap, um, who's a really good friend of mine, has some amazing drums, made a drum pack. Um, DiBiase, Flash Damas, Fool's Gold, which is A track. Um, so it's a ton of drums. Like when you buy it from the store, it comes with a bunch of drums, it comes with a bunch of samples. Um, and if you want to add your own library in, it's super easy to add it to all of the stuff that you have, um, which gives you a ton of options. I just have a crazy sample library that I just kind of go through. But what I can do, let me see if I can find, I have some samples. So these are... 
And all these sounds are royalty free that come from the program. That's new. And they are, if I'm not mistaken, these are all timed. That's right. So you can explain that. Yeah, so with, <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, the, if you look in the library now, I know it's a little low here on the bottom of the screen here, but each of the samples will come with the BPM and also the key of what the sample is. And what's great about uh, studio is that everything that you kind of throw into it will both time stretch to be in the key, or sorry, in the time. So let's say he pulls something that was at 140 beats per minute. It would time stretch to be a 94 automatically. And then also, if you have multiple samples that were in different keys, all those things will lock in together harmonically. So you don't have to worry about trying to shift things up or down to make them all work. They just kind of come together in a quick way. Um, and that's both with the sounds that are inside the program, but then also if he's going through his own sample library, he could pull multiple samples in and it would do the exact same thing. You guys put a lot of new stuff in here. Yeah, so generally about every month and a half, two months or so, there's a new pack that comes out from either a sound designer or a producer. Um, and as Jeff was saying, you know, between Flash Adamas, Fool's Gold, which is an eight-track pack, Just Blaze, um, Jewels uh, for the Afrobeat type sounds, um, we got a bunch of stuff that are uh, there. Track Girl's got a, a pack in there. She's crazy with, with her sounds. Um, so again, all those things come free with the program. So if you have the subscription, every time oh, a new wow. pack comes out, you'll get an alert inside the program saying new sounds are there. You could download them. They go all into the right places, your audio samples, your drums, instruments, so on and so forth, and you get busy with them. And again, they're all royalty free. So if you use these in a track and put it out, you don't have to worry about clearing them. We've taken care of that for you. So you just drag and drop, and this will sync it to a key, or you can take the, the, the key sync off. Okay. Just stretch it out. But the, the, the thing that I love is that you can grab different samples. They hear the bass and they say, whoa. They hear the bass and they say, whoa. Maybe not that one. But you, can, uh, you, you could grab different samples and you can pitch them in the same key. Hey, I did that. Let's, let's throw it in. Huh? Let's throw it in, see what happens. Okay. I told you I love hi hat loops, so I'm sorry. And the beauty of it is when you're off timing like I was, you can just fix it. But not only that, you have instruments. So you basically have drums, you have samples, and you have instruments. So I can pick add an instrument, and then I can go down here and say, you know what? Let me pick a bass. And yeah, Jeff, all these sounds are 
from your actual studio, like the instruments yes. in your studio, your Moogs and your Arps and yes. all the rest of that. So these are like strictly his sounds. It wasn't that he went to a sample library and grabbed the stuff. He literally was in the studio, pressed the button on the keyboard, sampled it, twisted it to make it his own, and then now it's inside a Serato studio. Maybe try maybe see what happens with playing key. Let's see what happens with that. Let's see. That's not my key. <laughs> but it will play in key. Like it'll find your sample and then it will give you all of the keys. These are for all of the people who aren't really players, That's but right. you want to just put stuff in. I'm not a keyboard player. I just fake it. Very, very well. I wouldn't even say fake though, because I've seen you on the keys. So for the most part, that's basically drums, some keys, a key sample, and bass. But what I love about this is if you look on this bottom layer and it says intro, that's basically the first pattern that I made. What I love is when you click the one next to it, it'll ask you, do you want to copy the one before it or do you want to make an empty pattern? So a lot of times what I like to do is make about four or five patterns that are very, very similar, that I might just change one thing. So if I say I want to copy this one, I want to put another bass note here. Then I just do the same thing. Copy it again. What else do you want to add in this? Um, and what I may do in this. If you look on the side, the times two kind of gives you twice the amount of grid that's on, and the three next to it allows you to put swing notes in. So this allows you to see more, as you see how the grid got bigger, this allows you to see more that if you want to step right to, to put something in, you can just put... So I would really like to move this snare to give it more of a swing.
then I'll do it one more time. This time I go to the bass and I want to take the bass completely out. So with this, you can name it and say this is bass out. This is skip snare. This is version two. And this is the main. So you literally can make all of the pieces however you want, as many as you want. And then what I always do is go into a song view and I can basically build the song out from here that if I start playing, if I start playing it from the song view, so I'll say, you know what, I'm going to start this song off with no bass. So that basically plays your whole arrangement in your song at any given time. If you want to fix something in, ver in, in version two or in the skip snare, you can go and edit. It'll change it on the bottom. Um, it has, uh, which I'm going to let OP tell you about, it has a bunch of the mastering functions that if you kind of have it to the point that you want to bounce this or play this out, um, it has audio tracks, which is absolutely amazing because you can grab acapellas and put in. If you have a, a, a record that you have an acapella and you know the tempo of it, or even if you don't know the tempo of it, you can put it in, you can squeeze it, you can fit it, and mix it, bounce it down, and play it out. Yeah, that's right. So a couple of things with the audio tracks. The first thing, as Jeff was saying, if you want to throw an acapella in, right, you got you know acapella from an artist that you like and you want to remix it, you throw it in, and what's great about the acapellas is, is that uh, it will uh, sync both by BPM and key. So if the song wasn't in key, it's going to put it into key right away and make it work. Uh, the second thing with the audio tracks is that you could actually record into Serato Studio. So if you want to record your vocals, you want to record playing the bass, whatever the case may be, as long as you have an interface and a mic and or an instrument to be able to go in, then you can record all your audio in and do the same thing uh, and make that happen. If you slow this down or speed this up, if Jeff speeds this up to about 105 BPMs, this will all lock in and time stretch at the same time. And also, if he changes the key, everything will change in key at the same time. If you recorded something in vocals, bass, so on and so forth, all that stuff would transpose at the same time as well. So instead of you having to go through each individual track and try to transpose each piece to make it work, within literally a click of a few buttons, it does it all. If 
you look at the top here where the hi-hat loop is, you'll notice that he was working with a sample, but the MIDI notes are here. And when he closes it, it gives you an audio rendering of the track, right? So this is pretty dope because for literally every piece of MIDI that you do, when you close it, you can see the rendering of it. And you can also see where the frequencies are. So his kicks are gonna be those kind of like reddish colors, his snares and hi-hats, those kind of bluish colors. Uh, the piano, because it's kind of in that kind of mid-range range is gonna be kind of more orange. You get to see the frequency of everything directly here. And this is what kind of makes it stand out. One of the things, many things that makes it stand out from other DAWs because you can visually see mm -hmm. what's happening while you're making it in the process. Instead of being like, oh, it sounds like this, but I can't visually see what the, the, the feel and the frequency and everything is. This gives you that automatic feedback right here, which is pretty amazing. Um, and then when you get to the master, which is, yeah. as Jess Jeff was talking about before, so in the song view, you might not be able to see it as clear down here, but we'll click on the master track down here so you can really see it. When you start to play the track from all your scenes laid out the way that you want to in the song, you'll see the full waveform of what you've done show up. default, there's a brightener EQ, a master compressor, and a limiter in, in the master section, right? And there are a bunch of other different effects that come inside of Survival Studio that you can put both on the master, but also on individual sounds and individual tracks, right? So there's a bunch of incredible stuff that's inside. Plus, if you want to use your own VSTs, audio units, you got Wave stuff, you got Universal Audio, you got Arteria, you got all this amazing stuff, you can put that stuff inside of here uh, for your effects. Now, you'll notice that as Jeff was kind of messing around with the EQ, the compressor, the limiter, the actual audio file at the top was starting to change in real time. Right? So as you were starting to go through and make these adjustments, you can both hear and also visually see what's happening. So as you're changing it, you'll notice how the waveform here starts to change a little bit as he's doing it. that breaker effect, and you can actually automate that too, which is pretty dope. Now that emptiness doesn't mean that it's gone. No, no, yeah. not at all, not at all. It's just literally, it does like a DJ break, so like as if Jeff was DJing and he hit the stop button on the turntable and it paused, so you, it does that same exact thing with that breaker effect, which is a Serato effect, which is pretty dope. Um, but again, you get to see all of that kind of change that happens. So if you're hearing something, you're like, oh, that sounds good, but I want to kind of make sure like visually looks good as well. You can see that happening here, again, which is something different than a lot of the other DAWs. Now, I know some people in the past, what they would do is they would make a track in whatever the DAW they were using, and they would throw it inside a Serato DJ mm -hmm. to go look at the waveforms to see if it looked good, right? It sounds good, but do the waveforms look good? Does it look loud enough and you know, feel the same thing? Instead of you having to go to an, the other program to do that, you can visually see it right here, and then it's in, it's in pocket, and it's good. Um, Jeff, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Let's go to one of the demo tracks that you made in your pack and play one of those. Okay. So we'll go out to the library, and under the projects, uh, back up at the top. Yeah, yeah there we go. And then all, all demo projects, yeah. Where am I at? Oh, you don't have your, I thought you were in there with us. Y'all just yeah. erased me. Nah. Uh, am I? Not, I'm, I have maybe, to be I'm, in here. 
Maybe we didn't put it in when we did the, the load up. Okay, well, as to the point of this, what Jeff did here, technically there are a bunch of demo projects that come with Who the program. Who can we play? Uh, let's play the Just Blaze one. Just Blaze? Yeah, it's up the top. That's me. Yeah, we'll load it in. Where am I clicking? No, just click and drag it up. Oh, there yeah. you go. I knew that. I don't want to save that. So when we first launched Serato uh, Studio, we went to people like Jeff, went to Just Blaze and a bunch of other people and showed them what it was and got the feedback. Oh, you should add this, do this, so on and so forth. And so Just was the first person we did a sound pack with, and this is one of the tracks that he did as a part of the sound, uh, sound pack. So that was one of the things from the Just Plays pack that's there. And what's great about this, again, talking about that time stretching and key shifting and all that, is that the original BPM for the main sample was 122 BPMs, but the track that he made was at 86. Oh, and wow. this is in C sharp minor, and everything that he threw into the, the pack or into the track when he put it together all locked in. Mm -hmm. So again, that kind of like easy workflow situation. I've been in the studio with Jeff at his house and I've literally seen him just sit there and just make stuff, throw samples in and everything is locked in, he's moving real fast. Um, and I would say probably one of the easiest things you've kind of used oh, in terms of creativity it, it, to make stuff happen. Hands down, the easiest. The easiest just yeah. to, to get your ideas out. It's, it's like I said, I've probably missed out on some of the best records I probably could have ever done because I forgot them just walking to the studio. So you kind of want to be able to get your ideas out fast. Um, and from the first time that I've seen Serato Studio, I kept saying that I have not seen anything that allows you to get your ideas out fast, uh, faster. Um, it just requires the setup. It requires for you to know what packs you have, what drum sounds you have, what samples you have, but you can literally open this up on a train, you can open it up on a plane, 
and knock something out in 10, 15 minutes. Because what you really want to do is get started. Once you get started, you can always go back and finish it. But that initial idea is the idea that you don't want to lose. Um, another thing that I realized that just did, if you look at, he named his, like I named mine the first verse, and he named his by alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And if you realize D and E are smaller because you're not set, even if you program something that's eight bars, you don't have to use all eight bars when you go to drag it into the arrangement. You may only want to use four. You may only want to use two, just depending on how you want to arrange your song. So this is, this is hands down the easiest, fastest, most powerful program that I have. And as a DJ, especially coming from using from Serato, when you got to this, it was an easy kind of move from DJ to this because it just kind of all works in the same way, right? It's the same library. It's your, you know, if you put this on the computer, if you're a DJ and you put this on a computer that you DJ on, your DJ library will come up on the side. So you can literally grab songs that you play out and say, I want to make a DJ edit. And you can grab it and you treat it exactly the same way. How do I want to cut this up? Do I want to take verses out? You know, there may be songs that you really only play one verse of the song that you can make that version straight from your Serato. And once you make it, you can bounce it and save it right back into your library and play it out in 10 minutes. And you've done a lot of this for your, your DJ a sets. A lot, a yeah. lot, a lot. Um, like I said, it's, I, I like to have fun when I'm playing music. Um, when I'm listening to music, a lot of times, you know, I, I always say, wow, if I did that, I would have cut that out. Or if I did that, I would have started from this point that I turn around and say, you know what, I'm just going to make it. Or I have a record that I really, really like that I want that's 100 BPMs, and I kind of want to play it in a house set. So I make it 118, 119, put a four on the floor, kick on it, and change the arrangement around and bounce it and play it. Um, and so many times, you know, I've done this just playing around and played it out and had people come up to the booth and was just like, who did that edit? And I'm just kind of like, I did, like five minutes ago. <laughs> clean, clean. There's actually a video on YouTube um, where he goes through actually making a beat in full. It's a beat, uh, beat nuts joint that he yeah. did. And literally within, you know, 10, 15 minutes, the whole joint is done and clean. And he's actually played it out for gigs. And it's, it's, you know, it works as all the tracks he plays work on the dance floor. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, you know, I kept saying that something that allows you to get your ideas out and play them for people very quickly and very, you know, very quickly, but they're full ideas. These aren't half ideas. These are, these are done ideas. You know, um, the, the, the Beat Nuts remix I did, I could have released that if I wanted. You know, it sounded like I mixed it and mastered it, and I did the whole thing in Serato Studio. Um, and that's, that's just really exciting to me because, you know, like I said, um, there's the creativity and the gear, and both of them serve a very big purpose. Um, you don't want them to get in the way of each other. Like, you don't, you don't want to waste your time having to learn something to the point that now that you've learned it, you forgot your idea. So this is something that I, I believe that out of the box, the first time you try it, you're going to come up with something that you're going to keep. That's right. For all of you that are here, uh, because you registered, um, we're going to send out an email to you. And if you're interested in doing a pre-trial on studio, get three months to be able to check this out. And if you dig it, then you can get it from Sweetwater right here. All the sales engineers here, the great folks and staff at Sweetwater will be able to help you make this work and uh, get busy. And a bunch of tutorials that are online and a bunch of new stuff that's coming yeah. into the program um, very, very soon that's going to make this even more dynamic uh, than it already is. So, um, so you make beats all the time in Serato Studio, mm -hmm. but then you, again, move it over into the DJ world. So let's move over to the other side of the stage and let's... Uh, Talk about how you put your sets together with the DJ side of things. Wow, that's big. So we got to give a big, big shout to uh, Pioneer DJ. Yes. Uh, they have helped to put this thing together as well. 
Um, and what Jeff is using today is the Pioneer DDJ Rev7 controller. Uh, it is the first motorized platter uh, DJ controller from Pioneer. And this thing is absolutely amazing. Uh, it yes, just it dropped is. in January and like literally every DJ in the world is talking about this thing right here. Uh, I was uh, honored to be able to go to Jeff's house and show this to him for the first time, and I saw his eyes light up as <laughs> soon as it came outside the box. Uh, and within minutes, he was getting busy doing a routine without any like hesitation whatsoever, um, in part because of the fact that it's built similar to the way that he already DJs, right? Mm -hmm. The basis of the controller is built around the structure of the S9 mixer, if you're familiar with the DJ mixers. Uh, so the S9, the S7, the S11 series is all built out in that same kind of platter f uh, form. But the way that the actual platters work, uh, they spin like regular turntables do, right? So for Jeff, literally as he would be DJing on his turntables at home, he could do the same thing with the controller here, uh, built out in the battle style form and fashion. And it's got a bunch of different, different effects on it. And, it's absolutely crazy. So I'm gonna let Jeff kind of talk a little bit about like how he puts his DJ sets together, what inspires him to put certain things together, and then he'll kind of walk through a couple of things on the controller, yeah. what it does. Um, you know, it, it's once again, my, my, my workflow is I want the equipment to be invisible. I want it to be powerful to allow me to do everything that I want. But if I'm focusing so much on the equipment, my job as a DJ is to keep the dance floor moving and make people happy through the music. And if I'm focusing on my equipment, I'm not focusing on my music. So the first thing that I realized is the first time that I touched this, I seamlessly probably did a 30-minute set without even thinking about it. Just picking the records that I want, the cue points that I want, lining everything up, um, and making the set make sense. You know, I am somebody that I play every kind of music under the sun. Um, and sometimes I like to play every kind of music under the sun at the same time um, because people aren't necessarily expecting that. And, you know, what you want to do is you want to take people through musical journeys with the, your song selection. Um, but this being straight out of the box, anybody that knows me knows that I am a turntable guy. I'm turntables till I die. You know, that's what I came up on. But I'm also a gearhead. And, and I understand what the job is, that the job isn't me making sure that I have turntables to use. It's me making sure that I perform for people in a way that they're used to. So once this came out of the box and I looked at everything on it, and this encompasses everything that I've ever used and realized how seamlessly I was able to use this, you know, this was this was a game changer for me because it allows me to basically show up someplace. You know, I know I'm going to have shows that people are going to be looking for me to pull out two turntables and a mixer and do everything that I do. There are a lot of times that you do corporate gigs. There are a lot of times that you do birthday parties. You're not going to do your niece's birthday party and do a routine that I'm scratching behind my back. I should hope not. But... Um, <laughs> You know, some of us do, but um, you, you really want something that's seamless that I can put this in a case, basically take this out, plug this up, and there's no, no difference. If everyone in here closed their eyes and in 15 minutes I did a DJ set, you wouldn't know if I was using turntables or the Rev7. And to me, that's the game changer, that nothing about what I do as a DJ changes using this. Matter of fact, it's actually... 10 times easier because this is it. That's it. That's the whole thing. Um, so yeah, I was, I was super excited, you know, when I used it. Um, I actually did a show, uh, I want to say last Thursday was the very first show, did a skating party and I brought this. No one knew what I was using. I was up in a, a booth in the sky overlooking the skating ring, played everything I wanted, did routines, did the whole nine yards. And at the end of the night, the, the opening DJ came up and looked and saw what I was using and his mouth fell on the floor. And he's probably gonna call somebody at Sweetwater and order one. So just be on the lookout for the guy. His name is Tito. So when Tito calls, just tell him Jeff sent it. But it's, you know, like, like OP said, like, there's nothing that I cannot do on this. 
Um, and that's big coming from somebody like me because I am a gear fanatic. The, 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 the performance is the most important thing. So shout out to Pioneer for coming out with something that's extremely portable that does not change my workflow. So when you start thinking about putting DJ sets together, mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your mind frame? Um, well, I like to, I know you want to play stuff that people know. The, the, to me, the game changer in a DJ set is when you play something that people didn't expect. Everybody goes to a club and everybody knows you're going to hear Drake. You're going to hear this. You're going to hear this. When you play that curveball. When everybody walks out of a club, no one says, oh, my God, he killed that Drake song. They always talk about the song that you played that no one expected. You know, and that's something that's very important to me, that I want to take people on a trip, on a journey. If you want to hear Drake, no, no disrespect to Drake, if you want to hear Drake all day, turn the radio on. You know, it's, it's, you have a place for that. And what my job is, is to try to take you on somewhat of a musical journey that you're going to walk out and say, oh, my God, you know, I can't believe he played that. Oh, my God, can you, can you understand? Those are the game changers. Those, those are the, the memorable moments. And I've always been like that, you know, that it's just very important to make sure that what I play is going to get some kind of a reaction from the crowd. So I've, I've put together all kinds of sets. You know, from, from the time Serato came out, you know, I'm somebody that I have about 65, 75,000 records. You really don't want to carry 75,000 records to the club. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. So to, to, to be able to sit on a plane or on a train and start pulling records together and say, oh my God, you know, I want to do a roller skating set. What kind of music would people want to hear in a roller skating ring? And you just start, first of all, you can name it, that this is my roller skating set. And you could just start grabbing your favorite roller skating jams and put them in the set. So I have sets for everything. Like, I, I, I'm really embarrassed that you guys can see the names of my sets because I got a set called Warm and Fuzzy. <laughs> I know what it means, but I mean, I have corporate sponsors, roller jams, Welcome packs. I have uh, folders of edits of, of, of some of my favorite DJs. Um, I have remixes that people have done that you basically set it up how you feel comfortable and how you know your music. It is, it is very difficult trying to navigate through 100,000 records. So you have to figure out some level of organization because you don't want to be in front of a bunch of people at your niece's birthday party before you go and do your DJ routine and you can't find the records that you want to do to your DJ routine off of. So organization is very important. But I play a little bit of everything. Um, I do sets that I call gumbo sets because I just throw everything in the pot and I don't know what you're going to get. Hope you enjoy it, which a lot of people really tend to enjoy the gumbo sets because you don't, you don't know what it is, and it's taking people on a journey. Is there a little journey you want to take us on? I, listen, I mean, I got a whole bunch of journeys. It's just, wh where are you trying to start? <laughs> See, okay. Uh, uh. Okay, all right. And what we might do is, as we're going through this journey, um, I don't know if we can get some of the overhead here on the, the controller when he's playing, but it's going to be important to kind of watch how he maneuvers around the Rev 7 controller. Because uh, yeah. again, the way that he plays at home with his turntables, his controller, oh, sorry, turntables and mixer, that same workflow is going to happen right here. So it'd be good to be able to see that overhead as he's kind of playing around with this. Um, okay. All right. We not see, listen, you just you don't go to dinner and ask for dessert first. <laughs> see, we got a bunch of DJs in here that's like Jeff is about to come in here. If you notice with this overhead here, 
uh, one of the great things about the Rev 7 controller is that you can actually see the waveforms for each of the decks on the platters themselves, which is amazing. So that way, he can see exactly where he's at inside of Serato on the track. He sees his cue points, uh, and he can just line everything up super easy without having to think about it too much. It's just all right there in front of him. And that is great because he doesn't always have to go back and look the, at the computer because it's right there visually in front of him on the platters. Okay. All right. I'm just, I, listen, I'm just going to play some music. My man. That's it. I'm just playing music. Like that, didn't you?
hits your lyrics just split you Head so hard that your hat can't fit you Either I'm with you or against you Format bench you Back through that maze I sent you Talking to the rap inventor Go with the game type fifth that flame right Spell my name right B-I double G-I-E Ice out, lights out, man Tell them to play in this Hard, 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 and this Battling
many weeks shows you slept through? Time's up, I'm sorry I kept you Thinking of this, you keep repeating your miss The rhyme from the microphone solo with So you sit by the radio and on the dial soon As you hear it, pump up the volume Dance with the speaker till you hear it blow Then plug in a headphone, cause here it go It's a full letter word when it's heard to control Your body to dance So, dot text the tempo like a red alert Reaches your reflex and let it work When this is playing, you can't get stuck with the steps So can say, and I'ma still come up with A gift to be swift, follow the leader The rhyme will go deaf with the record that was mixed a long time ago It could be done, but only I could do it For those that can dance and clap your hands to it I start to think, and then I sink into the paper Like I was in When I'm writing, I'm trapped in between the line I escape Stop what you're doing, cause I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you're used to. I look funny, but yo, I'm making money, see? So yo, world, I hope you're ready for me. Now gather round. I'm the new fool in town, and my sound's laid down by the underground. I drink a bottle of Hennessy you got on your shelf. So just let me introduce myself. Yeah. 
trouble just to move out on a double and you don't let it trouble your brain because away goes trouble down the drain said away goes trouble down the drain 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 down the drain
the magnificent, the magnificent, the magnificent DJ Jazzy Jeff. Big round of applause. Yeah. See if we can get this back on right. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, man, there's so much to ask questions about what just happened right there. I have no idea what's going on with my mic. <laughs> no, I think. I think Am I good? good? Yeah, okay. I think we're good. We can hear you. All right. Um, let's talk about first off before we get to the music, the actual performance of what you did. Uh, the platters first off on yeah. this thing, like the feel of them, what they allow you to do, so on and so forth. Um. Well, because I'm so used to turntables, I'm used to rotating platters. I'm used to the platter moving. Um, I mean, I like all of the other stuff, but I really feel comfortable when the platters are moving underneath my fingers. Like, it makes me feel like I'm on turntables. These are the size of pretty much 45, so 7-inch records. So this makes me feel like I'm playing a bunch of 45s. Um, so that was, that was definitely... The, the game changer, because there's a bunch of controllers out now that the platters don't move, um, and there's very few with the ones that, that do move. So because these move and feel so much like turntables, I'm really comfortable. Yeah, it looked clean. Um, there was an effect that you were using. I know that's right. Hey, yeah. so on, so on, so on, yeah. check that out. <laughs> <laughs> So on this controller, on the DDJ Rev 7. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. They added on, I think there are about 22 effects that you can use that are built in yes. to the controller, along with being able to use the Serato effects if you want to use them as well, right? Mm -hmm. But there's one called Duck Down. Yeah. He knows it's right. Talk about that Duck Down and why you like it so much. Well, yeah, we're going to talk about it because it's not on anything else but this. Um, but yeah, like the first time that I messed with this, and I used this effect, this was kind of like, oh my God, this is amazing. And every time that I've used it, it always gets a very good look from the crowd that is kind of like, what is he doing and how did he do that? Um, I'm just one of the people that I'm pretty sure my brother over here is one of the people that we want this in all of the, all of the mixers. So, you know, I am lobbying, just so that you know, I'm lobbying for them to put this in the S11 and the S9. But this is an amazing effect. This has... And this isn't the only amazing effect that it has. It has a bunch of new effects that are on any other controller or any other mixer than this that, that, that are really good. That, you know, I got to tip my hat to Pioneer. You know, um, I've been working with Pioneer for 20 some odd years. Pioneer never ceases to amaze me. They always are coming out. They, they ask the questions. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of times, and even what this form is for, is to ask the questions or get some insight on some of the gear. And, and that's how we make the gear that you love, they make the gear that you know they're happy with, and everybody's happy. So shout out to Pioneer. Big, big shout out to Pioneer DJ on that, for real. So the way that the... Uh, this is set up is set up in battle style. Mm -hmm. So in battle style, meaning that the pitch adjust is at the top of where the controller is set up, um, kind of like you were doing battle style on your turntables. So that feel is very much similar to the way that you already rock, right? Yes. Yeah. Feels, so feels that, really that's close a, to to turntables um, because I turn my turntables battle style just to make sure that I don't knock the needles off. That was the reason why we started to turn them. To, to the side. Um, now that I don't have needles, but I'm used to the pitch being at the top, so I can kind of regulate it. Um, and like I said, it's really muscle memory. It's This mixer is very similar to the mixer that I use, so I didn't have to learn a new mixer. I don't have to learn new platters. The platters turn and they rotate. The pitch is in the same spot. So the only thing that I'm looking for is where's my load button and where's my scroll button. So this was a seamless transition. And, and it helps that you have the waveforms inside the platter. Oh, man. Like, you can put your, your artwork of the song you're playing inside, or you can put the waveforms. So it's, it doesn't require you to have to stare at your computer, which is something that I always, you know, a lot of times you would go and see DJs DJing, and they're like this. <laughs> And I'm kind of like, stop looking at the computer. Stop looking at But So for them to put it here, at least you can be like this instead of being like that. 
let's, let's get to that music. Um, you, your taste is so varied and so wide, as you said, and you played so much stuff in, in the middle of all that. Um, a lot of people would think that it'd be difficult to do something like that. Like, how, what in your brain allows you to say, let's go from funk to disco to hip hop to Brazilian to so on and so forth, James Brown to Nicole Buss to Pharrell to so on and so forth, make all these things come together? Well, one reason I'm old, so I've been DJing. I was DJing before hip hop started. And all we had was funk and soul. All we had was rock records. All we had was disco records. So I didn't come up in an era that it was genre-based DJs. Like, I, I, I've always hated when someone said, oh my God, Jeff, you're a hip-hop DJ. No, I'm a DJ that plays hip-hop. I play everything. So I've always kind of looked at it like, you know, I don't know anybody on this earth that only likes one style of music. Like, and that's, and that's it. So... You know, you're trying to take people on places. There, there, you know, there are certain things that I've realized, you know, when I, when I was coming up, I wasn't really big into reggae. But if I was in a club and the DJ played reggae, I didn't leave. You know, I knew he was going to go through his reggae set and he was going to eventually play something that I like. So I take that into consideration. You are not, you had to be pretty damn bad to run people out the club. <laughs> people aren't going to leave. They're going to wait until you play something that they like. And at the end of the day, I've always looked at it in the law of averages that if I'm DJing for two hours, if I can play 45 minutes of something that you love, you are walking out the club like this. And that's it. You do this, what, on Wednesdays, on Saturdays? Wednesdays at noon. At noon, that's right. Yeah. Right. On, on Twitch, on Instagram, on the YouTube, on the Jazzy Jeff app. If you don't have the app, make sure you go get that off of the app store. Um, and then also on the Saturdays as well on Twitch. And during pandemic, at least for me, I can say, and a lot, a lot of people that I know, your streams kind of helped save a lot of us because you took this style and approach of music and gave it to the world. Like a lot of people, like, oh, I saw Jazzy Jeff play at the club, but then I saw him on Twitch and he played something I ain't never yeah. heard before. <laughs> oh my God. And that, that, just, that community grew so, so crazy. Yeah. Um, just talk about that experience of like how you've been able to develop that, that, uh, that audience on. Um, you know, listen, the past two years for everybody has been a little crazy. Um, unfortunately, when the pandemic hit in 2020 in March, I was one of the first people to get sick. And I got really, really sick. Like, I almost wasn't here. Um, and that really put a lot of stuff in perspective. But while I was laying in the bed, damn near on my deathbed, I picked up my phone, and D-Nice was playing. And I looked, and D-Nice had 100,000 people listening. And what it made me understand was in a time of crisis, music kind of calmed people down. So as soon as I was able to... to play music, I said, you know what, let me play music, not just for, for people, but I needed to play it for myself, because if this is something that I've been used to doing for God knows how long, and all of a sudden the entire world stopped, I need to keep my sanity too. So I went and I started playing music, and I looked up, and it was 7,000 people watching me play music, and I'm like, I don't do shows for 7,000 people, but I'm in my socks, I'm in my house. <laughs> And I don't have someone coming up to me with a note saying, play Drake. <laughs> so I was able to really dig a lot deeper into my music. And what I started to realize is the deeper that I dug into the music, the more people came along with me. Because it made me understand that my life wasn't just about the 25 or 35 records that they may play on the radio or the 75 records that you may be forced to play in the club. There's millions and millions of records. And if you can piece these records together, you can take people on a trip that they weren't used to taking. And I also realized that I am not playing for people on a dance floor. There are people that skate when I play. There are people that are cleaning their kitchen. There are people that are, that, that are cooking, playing cards. I am providing the soundtrack to whatever you want to be doing. And what I realized, as crazy as the past two years have been, that was a level of comfort for people. 
that was, I realized like we all met every Wednesday at noon for the lunch break. We all met for the Magnificent House Party at 12 o'clock on a Saturday. And it would be hundreds of thousands of people that I'm like, I, I don't play for hundreds of thousands of people until I started playing at home. Um, and not everybody wants to go to a club. You know, that was a, that was a very big realization for me that um, I had a gentleman hit me maybe 2020, maybe in July, and was like, I'm excited to see the stream today. This is my first time seeing you. And I was like, you know, oh, wow. You know, really? And he said, I graduated from high school. I went into the military. I got married. I had four kids. My lifestyle isn't conducive to a club. And that rang through my ears. Because before the pandemic, the only place that you were going to hear a good DJ was in the club. It's, it's really cool hearing good DJs. It's really cool now that you can hear them on a regular. You know, if, if anybody in this room doesn't subscribe to Twitch, I implore you, go download Twitch. You can download it on any computer, any phone, any, any uh, uh, you know, smart TV. Download Twitch and just start looking up will be the best party that you've ever been to. Most of the most amazing DJs are on Twitch. They play every week. You can go club hopping. One night, me and my wife grabbed a bottle of wine. We went in our room, and I clicked on, and Rich Medina was playing Afro House, and we in there dancing. And then I clicked, and Natasha Diggs was playing Funk and Soul, and she's twirling. And I clicked, and Shortcut and Just Blaze was playing House. And I looked at my wife and said, this is the best club experience I ever got. And it's in my house. You know what? Parking was free. <laughs> the drinks were cheaper. I fell asleep in the club. <laughs> and I woke up with my wallet. <laughs> so if you, uh, that's not to tell you don't go to a club, but if you do not have a desire to go to a club and you want to hear good music, it's tons of it on Twitch. Yeah, make sure and you the DJ Jazzy Jeff app. That's right. Website. Make sure you get that app, DJ, DJ Jazzy Jeff app. <coughs> um, it's your first time to Sweetwater, to Fort Wayne. Yes. Uh, you've had a big smile on your face all day. Listen, so how many people are old enough to know about the Sears catalog? There you go. So you remember you would get that Sears catalog, and you would carry, excuse my language, you would carry that shit around, and you would come in the kitchen when your mom was cooking, and you just so happened to flap it open to what you wanted. You circled stuff. That's what the Sweetwater catalog is for me. We don't have Sears catalogs anymore. So I carry around my Sweetwater catalog and circle all of the stuff that I want, all of the stuff that I want to try. So when the opportunity came for me to come to Sweetwater, I immediately jumped at it. I'm a big kid at heart. I don't ever plan on losing that because that's what keeps me young. Um, I've had an amazing time here. This is unlike anything that I've ever been to. I think it's really funny that all of my DJ and producer friends hit me today. It was just like, hey, I called you and you ain't hit me back. And I was like, guess where I'm at? And I said, Sweetwater, and everybody's jealous. So I got cred right now. But I really appreciate Sweetwater for having me. <laughs> Let's give a big, big round of applause for DJ Jazzy Jeff, the magnificent. Thank <laughs> you.